Hi, this is Biffle Cup with the Try Hard Podcast. This is episode 15 with Luke Hendricks from Teenage Halloween. I pass the gas station. My thoughts all seem to rhyme. Existential I'll take it. My urges are all fucked this time. Lay down on the night. I like so I was furloughed for a while and then September 1st I got my job back and then just yesterday I found out we're being furloughed again till November 1st hell yeah no 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 I'm I'm unemployed as of two days ago yes so it's great <laughs> it's um it's stressful but it's great I am able to focus on things right now but like I have no money so it's like kind of like a <laughs> it's kind of like a it's like a weird balance but oh my god well um that's a really good start because I want to focus on Teenage Halloween and you, but I also want to incorporate it with the music business side of things that, I don't know, don't always get talked about and stuff like that. So starting it off with having like a music career isn't always like everything you see on TV and stuff is a really good start. Yeah, definitely not. It, um, I feel like it is, it is exaggerated in the funniest way. No, it, um, mu- music in itself, as you know, is a really hopeful and loving thing filled with heartless moments so (laughs) it's all right thank you for having me i'm grateful to even like any sort of press for this release is like so appreciated oh my god i'm so excited well i don't want to get too ahead of myself but i'm so excited i've been listening to all the singles and i just heard the new one that just came out which was so good that's like such a new sound from what i've heard as a spectator like as a listener it's like a new teenage halloween sound for me yeah no we um so i've been listening to a lot of like like before making this record I was really into Granddaddy, if you know them, and like Elliot Smith. Oh, Elliot so, Smith. Oh my God. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I tr- I wanted to write a lot of like, like a lot of these songs are more like the loud pop songs, but like I'm trying to like, like slowly delve into like more mellow music too. And felt cool to put this song out because I feel like that's the first of like the little stylistic change that we're going for. Yeah, I mean, like we want to get more into like, we want to do more like meaningful, like ballad, ballad songs too. Cause like we, um, we've always been like a punk band but like we want to start like showcasing the like like the mellow like like songwriting aspect that's like fluid like i don't know this this new song is like it's my personal favorite but like i still love playing punk 
but this is just like a this is just like a personal favorite because it like the first time we're doing something like this. Has it been received well so far? I, I think so. Yeah. Days. Yeah. We wanted to make since like it came out at 10 a.m. today. We wanted to make it like the type of thing where it's like we don't have a blog because it's the week of the release. Like we wanted to put it out through like just like how we always put out songs because it's just like that song it felt right to do it with that. Right. It's like a new kind of like a new beginning in terms of like our sound. So it felt cool to put it out on like a roots level. Right. Because like the last two songs we put out, like we've been lucky enough to get like really insane write-ups. So this this one felt really good because it felt like much more like at home and normal because we're still a DIY band. This record has just been like received pretty decent so far. So we've been like fortunate enough to like expand in certain ways outside of it. But yeah, today felt very good because it, it felt like it always does. <laughs> That's amazing. So, okay, so you've got this release on the 18th and you've put out like three singles and the art is unified. It seems like you're working to like a big, uh, well, a big release. So what what was like the marketing scheme or plan for yeah. the self-titled album coming out? Um, well, it's not a concept album, but we wanted to have like one general concept for like the aesthetic. And I think that for the, all of our records, we're probably going to do that. Like that's the goal, like to have like one theme in the art that isn't exactly like yelled about in the lyrics. Right, right. So the pumpkin person is kind of like, like we wanted it to be like someone that is dressing how they want to dress in a world where that shit is like, like weird as fucking not wow. okay. So like, this is like, it's like how being trans is perceived that way. Um, we wanted it to be like, even like feeling like a costume because of the world doesn't, the world doesn't like, embrace you like it embraces like cis people and stuff right right so we wanted we wanted it to kind of be like um like because we have halloween in our band name so the idea of like costuming and presenting differently has always been something that i've wanted to touch upon in some sort of aesthetic or like art and it's and it, we actually came we actually got the idea because that the person that was doing our record cover we asked to listen to the record in full and draw what felt right like what like felt like like what felt like encompasses it and then yeah. um, and then Jordan drew like that character and we felt like we could do more with like the single art and stuff because that wanted to encompass like the struggles of feeling like you're always in a costume and like going around and like trying be loved and accept so like sweat it's not exactly about anxiety it's about not liking like the current american political system right not liking not like love like it's a love song because like i wanted to make a love song that's like a love song about loving someone so much that you don't want them to be in the current state of this world like you wish that they were like at a, like at a better period in time and they were like suffering less so, like, we wanted to make, like, because sweat is, like, could also be attributed with anxiety. We wanted to, like, make Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Like, make the album cover, like, the the person, like, sweating, like, looking anxious, looking like they're freaking out. And, like, how stationary is, like, looking at the news with, like, a snack and, like, looking, like, kind of, like, at the edge of their seat, like, seeing what's on the news. And then holes is kind of, like, how we perceive our funeral in our head and, like, wow. death and stuff. So, yeah. like, we wanted, we wanted to, like, like Alana did made a lot of those ideas when drawing, but also like every piece of art that we've gotten, we've somehow been able to interpret in a way that makes it like a bigger thing. Yeah. So, so luckily we've, um, we're silly. So like, it's great to have like a uh, artists that are actually smart working with us. <laughs> we, um, we have, um, we've had like them give us these pieces and we've just been trying to like, trying to put it together so like now that we're in interviews we're trying to talk about how like it does actually connect like because lyrically it's like a lyrically it's about like the human struggle and then we're we're like trying to base the pieces of it to be around just like feeling like you have to present like present in a way that doesn't feel like you
okay, so I, I came out with an album in February and like the art, yeah. we had to, like I started with this one artist and he was amazing, but like the concept, it didn't end up, once we like saw it, even though it was amazing art, like it didn't fit with what we were trying to do. So yeah, then we, yeah. yeah, we had to go to like a totally different artist and then they were able to kind of do something that just synced up better. So how did you know, like, did you have any experience where like you were trying to mold the concept art and how did you know the character that's presented on the self-titled, like what made you feel like that was ready to go? That was the thing. I think it's because that, um, so Jordan, I've loved his art for so long. Like Jordan made the album cover, like the actual just made the concept of the pumpkin person, like worked with us on like the layout. Um, Jordan's in a band called Roswell Kid and oh, he cool. made, yeah, and he made the, the album cover and we we saw it and at first we were like we were a little taken back because we didn't want like the literal halloween aspect of our band to be presented so blatantly right. but then like i listened to the record a couple more times and like after we got the masters and then i feel like i felt like i can I, I connected with what he did with that like with the art like i felt like i was like I felt like I would have done some, like I would have drawn something similar from the emotion that I got from like what we do. And like, I don't, it's not like I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say it's like great. I'm trying to just like, I thought about it in a way that's like, what does this emotion put on paper? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like, I, I kind of got it because like Jordan, like we only played a couple of shows with Roswell kids. So they're looking at this record with like, kind of like not really knowing us all on a super super like deep level so they're like just listening to the lyrics and trying to make art based on that yeah and it um no it's felt it, it felt right like we looked at it we were like oh shit like maybe like maybe something different maybe this is it and then we listened to it and we kind of like all agreed that this is like great okay i have a i have like a character question or a personality question so cool. um uh, this is a question that I asked a North Carolinian band called the Muslims, uh, who's another cool, punk they're band. Awesome. Oh my god, they're so cool! Ah, I saw them. <laughs> I saw them at Punk Island. They were oh great. really? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I would kill to see them live. I was like, yeah, fucking awesome. Oh yep. my god, they're so cool. But um, okay, so I was like, basically, what led up to this question was they had like this thread about how mediocre white dude bands are kind of killing punk. So I asked them, like, if I asked, if I had you and Billy Joel Armstrong in the same room, and, you know, Billy, Old jo uh, Billy Joel Armstrong is just a straw man in this case, but, like, if I asked you and Billy Joel Armstrong, what is punk, what would you say, and what would you think that Billy Joel Armstrong would say? Um, I think Billy Joel Armstrong would probably say something along the lines of, like, like anti-establishment like not giving a fuck like um like wanting like wanting like more of like a peaceful way of, of like living i would probably say that i think punk is um punk is destroying the cop like mentalities in your brain and taking on the world in a way that um taking on a world in a way that exceeds um normal standards of like living like i'm tr uh, like not having a lot of money and learning to be content with the, the small things in life that make you happy um trying to think less materialistically which is like very um very hard to do because it is like a very um it's a very strange and addicting like feeling and i i would say because i'm not punk i'm still getting there i'm i would say that <laughs> I, I would i would say that it's like Definitely, like, just trying to live in a way that doesn't adhere to the, um, the oppressive standards that you, yeah. that you have in front of you. I can't remember exactly how they phrased it, but they basically said the same thing, too. They were like, I think we landed on, like, it's the difference between, like, the empty statement, fuck Trump, and, like, what does, and, like, versus, like, what does fuck Trump really mean? Like, yes, you know? Like, yeah, I was going to say how, like, posting is good but you have to know like what's behind what you're saying right exactly yeah like, you, have, you have to know like the depth of like your own life that you that you're living and like 
put that in the statement too to see if you're saying the right thing that applies to you. Right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I was getting from your from your social media. This is what my interpretation was, was that you were thinking about like releasing stuff earlier, but at the time, because there was so much going on, you decided to not post any music. Was that right? Yes. And um, we, we had like a lot of conversations with like friends and stuff about how, because um, we were going to put out a song in June and that's what, when, like, things were, like, really heating up. That's, like, when, like, Juneteenth was, like, really important, like, things. And it did feel right after having some conversations to wait. But it, it also, like, after after a month of, of, like, not putting out, like, putting out songs, it felt like it was okay enough to. But I don't right. think it's, the truth of the matter is that I don't think it's ever going to be fully okay right so there there is a point where it's like just drop this whoever wants to listen to it can and whoever doesn't doesn't have to because that it's like there's way more important things going on um i i think that it's a really yeah it's like complicated ground to cover yeah for sure Mm -hmm. um in that decision because i know i know you're on a label uh, mm-hmm. You might have a publicist. You might have, you know, behind we the do, scenes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so was there discourse with trying to meet these market demands? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was. Um. We we just we talked about it, and it was. Um. It was. It was complicated. Like the conversation was complicated. We were trying to see all sides of things, but we felt like, like we did come to a medium that like let's just wait a little bit because that's just like important a lot of bands did it like i i think i'm really happy that it ended up like being like a being like a normalized thing to do at that time right Um, but yeah no every everyone was like after some talking we all felt like good about it so yeah yeah absolutely yeah because also like i don't think that the sad part is that like there's so much like group think as the community that at, I don't think anyone would dare to question that decision. Right. Yes. Like, like, like press and stuff. So like, I feel like that was like, I feel like that was, that was a, that was a point where that kind of, kind of sad, like pressuring mentality was in our favor because that we, we felt like we really didn't want to do this. And we were hoping that like people didn't, um, didn't like throw any anything at us like we were hoping like press didn't like get upset that we wanted to push it but we we just we just did like we we didn't want to like and i'm not even patting us on the back i just think it was the right thing to do i don't know right you brought up the word uh commune or like commune think and one of the ideas that i read is going to be in your self-titled is community and so i was wondering if you could talk to us about how community plays a role in your self-titled and also tying it also to like the music business aspect if you have to work together with like a community um yeah i mean i think that we wouldn't be shit if it wasn't for our friends and our friends wouldn't be shit if it wasn't for all of us so like community is just like kind of like community is just important because that we're all helping each other out and i think that there's there's no like there's no rules for community but i think it's important that we all just like adhere to like loving each other at a point that is safe and healthy i mean i I don't know community ties into this record because it it feels like it feels like we all over the last two years have been i don't know like dealing with like i've been dealing with a lot of shit and i think that like as a group we need to just we need to just talk and i feel like this record definitely is about my experiences personally with like with like having a support system throughout music i mean i don't i don't sing about it too much but it's like it's an underlying theme for sure i would say that that is like that's what teenage halloween looks to me because looks like to me because I see you as kind of like you're the lead vocalist and you're you you come off as like the hub of Teenage Halloween. Um, um, yeah, yeah. No, we're we're trying to make it a little different, but I think I think I'm very active on social media, so that, that kind of helps. <laughs> yeah. So what what is like Teenage Halloween in terms of like who is everybody and what role does everybody kind of play? 
to to make it? Yeah, so I write the lyrics and I um did a lot, like did like the main thing for a couple years, but now like we're totally a collective. Like we're trying to like totally have equal level roles and stuff. Like um our guitarist Eli helps compose the music and also like helps write like songs and then um also like controls some of our social media and then um like Trisha like sings with me now and like on the second record we're gonna have um some songs she sings and it's gonna be like a little bit less just me and um like Pete plays drums and like helps drive us places because that we're all a lot of us don't have cars <laughs> um, and then like Jane writes insane melody over our songs she plays keys and like it sounds awesome and like Hakeem also helps with the melodies and they play sax it's it, it's it's wild it's a wild group of buds <laughs> that's amazing yeah you I love like just seeing all the pictures of of everybody you guys have really good pictures <laughs> yeah no we we have a good time and this the last like the last like two years we've been the same band so it's like been really nice like all six of us we've grown to really love and hate each other and it's been, <laughs> it's been no it's seriously been such a lovely thing like we're all we're all definitely on like a we're all on a similar level with writing songs and stuff so that's felt very very real Sir in the back door. You know, to me, Teenage Halloween is a very show-oriented, DIY-oriented band. And so what has the transition from performing to COVID looked like for you guys? Um, it's not pretty. I mean, we've been, we've been trying our, our darndest to, like, get anything to happen. And that's been a little rough. But we are going to, we want, I think we're going to do, like, full band live streams kind of soon. So nice. we're, we're figuring that out, like. There's this one space that I've been in the talks with about doing a stream and that'll be cool. And we're going to try and um, do a couple like internet shows. They, they're cool. I just like, don't know if they feel the same. And I'm right. trying to like, I'm trying to like get, trying to navigate that, trying to find ways to make it feel a little better. But like, yeah, it, it kind of like, it gives me that like really apocalyptic vibe and I, it's cool. But it does get it does get me a little down to like see my friends but through a screen. But it's better than nothing, so I'm grateful. But I just think it's like I'm I'm hoping that things adjust soon and I don't think we're gonna play a show until it does. Cause I feel like there's been a lot of bands like still playing and like I don't like I don't like hate on it because it's like you gotta do what you gotta do, but Ooh, I yeah. wouldn't Brian. Yeah, like I don't think it's like I don't think it's safe. So hopefully, I, I'm I play like I I would play something if it's like outside or like really distance, but like but like not outside in like a 
a space. Like I'm saying, like just like a fair or something. Right. But right. but yeah, no, it's been a weird adjustment. I just hope that like everyone that does this stuff stays safe. Yeah. Before COVID, I was like show oriented, just like regular how you have regular band orientations, like show recording that that that. But with yeah. COVID. I've been able to do things like get on Twitter, which, you know, that's a lot of other people are on Twitter anyway, but that was like a new thing for me. And, you know, work with social media influencers to like collab and stuff. I want to, I've been doing like visual art a lot. And nice. Drawing, and COVID has helped me. I'm, I, I've always wanted to launch a hot sauce thing. So I, I saw actually, that. Yeah, I'm your so first I customer. Just, I just finished finished that, and that's been really nice. This is not uh, music related at all, but how do you make hot sauce? And tell me about that. Oh, hot sauce! Um, it is very easy. So here, here it is. Um, we put cornstarch in a blender. Okay. With vinegar, which is a natural preservative, keeping it vegan, and then you put in the pepper that you want like I, I do habaneros right now but i'm getting um serranos and scotch bonnets because i'm gonna make like weird stuff with that like i'm making like a scotch bonnet one with cbd in it pretty soon oh shit and a um and a kiwi one with serrano peppers and then oh, oh my god but all you do is you put like starch vinegar and a pepper base um, don't put too many peppers in or it's not going to be good. It gets too hot. Um, and too hot is good, but it doesn't, um, if you're like trying to see who likes your shit, it's like good to like start a little less hot. Right. Um, and then like make like certain stuff for people that like hotter. And then, then you put your flavor in a Vitamixer or something that's not with the other thing, with, with the other mix. Like you get that mix of vinegar, starch, and um, the pepper together as a base. And then you put the flavors you want in a vitamin mixer, mix them together. And then you put them in a separate, in like a separate container and then you put them together and then blend them. That's how I do it. And then I put it on the stove and reduce it a little bit so it's like syrupy oh so there's like cook oh, okay okay yeah yeah for me at least because like i i like my hot sauce kind of like a not like a syrup but like like a different consistency than just water right or like yeah. and i don't really like the i don't really like the pulpy stuff so i right. i like my shit is like kind of like more syrupy so i because like just reducing it on a pan and then like cooling it is how you do it oh dang but i only know how to do it just because i looked it up on youtube one day it's <laughs> like it's really chill it's very easy you're with don giovanni records who actually represents a nerd music favorite uh named samus um, oh awesome yeah so i wanted to know about your experience with don giovanni records and you know so many people are unsigned I was wondering, like, can you tell me the difference between being signed and, and unsigned? There is no difference besides just having, like, someone give you an extra push, a little bit of help. Um, it's not having to be as manic about your shit. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, I feel like the, the only difference is that, like, I have someone that I can ask for help. Yeah. And, like, like and they can, like, put out, they, like, put out our records without, like, like, like they take risks on us and like that I don't have to take as much anymore. And that's like, and that's really nice and it feels good. And I feel like the, the, like it, you can still be signed to me a DIY band. Just like, it depends on like the label and the people you work with. And Don Giovanni has always been super DIY oriented, has always really cared about like, like keeping that like legacy of like punk music, like like very like do it yourself so we've we've been lucky enough to work with a like-minded label yeah okay so it's been three years since your last album is that right three years yeah yeah no it's, <laughs> yeah. so um something that like i hear a lot is like you gotta have your pre-game ready you gotta do your spotify pre-save links you gotta submit to you know these people six six weeks in advance it's weird is enough is true but <laughs> That is very true. It is really fucking weird. We didn't yeah. do that last time, but like, 
music has changed in three years. I, I haven't released a teenage Halloween record in three years, so I just like didn't know how music was right now. Right. In terms of that. So, but it's, uh, it and is awful. You got it. You, yeah, you can't. But yeah, so, but um, I was going to ask you, like, how have you built teenage Halloween with like your uh, 217, 2017 product? Like, how have you used that in a world where like everything is pre, pre save, pre save? And I'm going to be totally frank with you. I don't think that that really, that EP really helped us. I think it was just gigging like constant shows. Nice. Like we tried, we tried to play with all of our friends and as much as possible. So I think that like the live aspect helped so much more than the last release. And this next release is now the next step. Like, because of, like this, this first thing wasn't super different than the, than like our, first demo we ever put out so it feels like it feels like we're just like not really evolving over that three years and now this record feels like a like another thing like i felt like the shows were the only thing keeping us going right okay this question is about recording so like uh it's kind of like the same thing as what we were talking about like the artist that yeah. that did your art like so right now you're you recorded at a place called big mama's recording <laughs> The best. Uh, <laughs> had you had experience where like maybe a mix artist or somebody didn't really fit the sound that you were trying to achieve and how do you know that how did you know that big mama's recording was the right one for you the right fit for you so evan is such a good person and i saw evan had a band called this has actually because they just actually put out a, an ep recently has a band called the super weeks and um he 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 like played a bunch of shows in New Jersey when we were young and I didn't really know him until I went to record with him with my other band where like members are friends with him and then we recorded with him and then I was like this is like the perfect setup like this is like the chillest setup I've ever had the fact that like I had such a nice time recording when I usually don't like recording music made me want to pursue it with like Teenage Halloween like going to Evan yeah because um yeah no I was just gonna say because like that's the good thing because I'm in five bands so the good thing oh about, shit yeah that's yeah. crazy oh my god yeah the good thing about being in other bands is like you sometimes meet people that like are really good for the another band you're in like in terms of like their what they do and like their art and stuff that's so true yeah networking for sure i don't know how yeah it's weird yeah but yeah yeah sometimes it's really nice and helps so this is kind of in the same vein but you did this really interesting piece uh a few years ago about touring queer bands and finding the right spaces to perform so tell us a little bit about finding these right spaces because you do tour nationally um so mm -hmm. you, uh, you might not know every venue personally when you get there and have you had experiences in spaces that you didn't like and what happened in those spaces? Um, I, like, the only, like, really bad experiences are, like, I don't like spaces with, like, mad flights of stairs. And, like, that's just because I'm, like, I got, like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's not, it's not good. Like, my body isn't really accustomed to that kind of stuff, especially with, like, lifting and stuff like that. Um, and, like, I, the only, like, negative experiences at venues I have are usually from show goers, so hopefully I'm, like, I'm, I'm hoping that in the future, like, especially with this, like, definite, like, social, like, uprising, I think, I'm hoping that there's a little bit more, like, filtering of, like, how people act at shows. Yeah. So, that's the only, um, that's all I can say about that, like, I, like, being a queer artist is, oh, in like spaces is always going to be a struggle but like the main thing that makes it a struggle is the show goers yeah because like people most people at spaces are just like doing their job so it's like they're just like working but like the people that go to them are the problem it's like customers at a restaurant right right yeah okay i got two more questions you got cool. five minutes oh, yeah. no, okay no. okay you got it. so the first question is really easy where can people find you and follow you and listen to you yeah we're on instagram as teenage halloween we're on twitter as teenage halloween band without vowels except for in band we are on facebook with our name and Bandcamp with our name we were lucky enough to finally claim our name on everything because when we first started the name was taken so 
What? Yeah, just because it was like someone's like just like name. Oh on, wow! On, no, like just someone's name on the internet. Oh wow! Did you have but, to wait for that to expire? Or did you just like? Oh no, we we couldn't get it when we first started the band, and then when we were releasing this record, we were like, "Why don't we try again?" And then we just got it. Oh dang! So it was oh, like, all right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that worked kind of like in the in the stars. <laughs> All right, last question is, so I was, uh, I was going way back. So you might not remember this post. Uh, this was from 2016 in Facebook. Okay. So you wrote, or somebody from Teenage Halloween wrote, hey, on Facebook, hey, we had a meeting yesterday as a band and talked about how we could make a better difference in our community. We have decided that our shows are now going to be open outlets for artists, writers, zines, yeah. yes. So I guess talk to us a little bit about what you're talking about in this post and why do musicians need to do more than just make music? I mean, I think musicians need to do more to, than just make music because that art is about supporting other outlets of art. And like performance isn't the only form of art. So you have to just keep that in mind. And I think that kind of like ties into the same thing as like inclusivity and like allowing different like people and perspectives to be like in the conversation. But yeah, no, we had a meeting about that. And I think the only, I think that like we just wanted to like establish that like if you want to do some shit at our shows, you can just ask us and it's cool. Like, yeah. I don't know. It, it wasn't, we weren't really like, doing anything we were kind of just trying to like say like if you feel nervous about asking to showcase a certain thing just tell us and we're like down to help hell yeah yeah do you have anything you want to say yeah no um so soul glow released a new song listen to soul glow they're fucking awesome bad moves oceanator and skylar pocket are all putting out new stuff or have put out new stuff all great bands our friends in program are working on new stuff and we have we have other bands like i'm in inlet terror i'm in kissies i'm in magic relin and i those are those are the main active ones right now and then eli's in top nachos and winnebago vacation um jane has their own solo project um trisha has a band called my heart went oops <laughs> um, and I'm in that band too, but I just started playing in that band. Oh my god! Um, and then Pete has a band called Squat, and Hakeem has solo noise stuff that's coming out. So we all are doing other projects too, and we want to, yeah, we want to just like, I just wanted to pump that. <laughs> Luke, you are amazing. Thank you so much.